Well, President Trump spoke again today about Otto Warmbier, saying that his murder by North, Regia's, North Korea's regime was a preventable tragedy. It's a total disgrace what happened to Otto. That should never, ever be allowed to happen. And frankly, if he were brought home sooner, I think the result would have been a lot different. He should have been brought home that same day. The result would have been a lot different. But what happened to Otto is a disgrace. The president's right. It is a disgrace. It shouldn't have happened. And greater national outrage and a much more aggressive response from the State Department much earlier might have saved Otto Warmbier. And yet, as he was being held captive in that country, some on the left suggested that Warmbier deserved to be arrested because he was a white male. Over at Comedy Central, the misnamed cable channel, Larry Wilmore ridiculed Warmbier at length following his imprisonment. Watch this. Can I hear that name again? Otto Frederick Warmbier. <laughs> Otto Frederick Warmbier? Did this kid get arrested in North Korea and then just gave the cop his fake ID? <laughs> yes, sir, uh, we've got American student Otto Warmbier here. His, his birthday's 420. Um, and he lives on 69 Weed Avenue. Listen up, frat boy. Uh, this isn't like the time you stole Sigep's goat. This is North Korea. So you watch the tape of an American being humiliated during a show trial, and that's what you say? That guy's show got canceled, thank God. Meanwhile, Salon.com said Warmbier's humiliation was, quote, richly deserved and called him, quote, America's biggest idiot frat boy. HuffPo gloated that, quote, North Korea proves your white male privilege is not universal. Those quotes are real. We're not making them up, and they're disgusting. Michael Malice wrote a biography of the Korean dictator, Kim Jong-il. Marion Smith is executive director of Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. They join us tonight. Um, Marion, you've spent a lot of time thinking about communism and its effects. Do you think Otto Warmbier deserved what happened to him? Absolutely not. Uh, what, what he was alleged to have done was to uh, displace or remove a propaganda poster. Um, the only reason that he was targeted is because he is an American. North Korea considers... Uh, uh, North Korea considers that we are at war still. Um, there has been no end of the hostilities of uh, the Korean War. And so they're on a war footing with us. They are a totalitarian communist regime. Uh, they have tortured and killed American citizens before. And unfortunately, what has happened to Otto Warmbier, we, our, our hearts go out to his family. No, no family should have to suffer this in, inside of the United States. Uh, but it is uh, part and parcel of how they treat their own citizens. It is a cruel regime, and you could say, in fact, that all 25 million citizens yeah. uh, live in a slave camp. Yeah, they, I think they do. They're not Americans, though, so my concern is for people like Otto Warmbier. Michael, by the way, just for the record, I don't know if there's any real evidence he stole a propaganda poster or anything. His roommate, who was with him the entire time on that trip, said... He didn't see him do anything like that, uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if that were a lie. It wouldn't surprise me at all. But why the, why the reaction from some in the United States, looking at this fellow American suffering abroad, to laugh at the guy or say that he somehow deserved it? Where does that come from? North, listen, North Korea is a very complicated subject, and you don't expect people to understand it. That's why I wrote a book about it, so people could understand it. But if you don't understand the subject, right. the point to do is to be quiet and learn, as opposed to using it as a glib reason to have your stupid leftist talking points and mock someone who died while being a tourist. There's, these people are cretins through and through, and if they had any shame, they would shut up and go home like Larry Wilmer was forced to do. Yeah, and thank, and thank heaven. So, Marion, I'm, I'm struck, though, by the reaction if you take a poll of people under 30 about socialism or even communism and say, you know, what, what do you think of that? They're remarkably open-minded to it in a way that they're not toward, I don't know, fascism or any other grotesque form of government. Why has communism not been taught as the atrocity that it was? Well, I mean, we, we do have a double standard. The, the crimes of the Holocaust are well known. And we find right. it dangerous that younger generations would not know about it because it makes repeating something like that more likely. Unfortunately, the, the crimes of communist regimes, more than 100 million people killed in the last 100 years in some 40 countries since the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917, it's not known. And for people my age, millennials, we don't have a, 
uh, first-hand memory of you know, news reports uh, live. Um, so something like uh, what happened to Otto is shocking. We don't even have a framework for understanding um, right. w w what happened. And it should be a moment where we uh, remember why we fought the Cold War, why we fought in particular the Korean War. Um, North and South Korea, uh, Korea are remarkably different. Uh, South Koreans are free. North Koreans are slaves. And the only thing that made that difference was young American soldiers willing to fight and die there. Well, that's exactly so we made a difference. Thousands of them. That's exactly, that's exactly right. I wish people knew that. So, Michael, you, you, you follow this case of Otto Warmbier murdered by this criminal regime, and you wonder how can the United States respond in a way that is you know, justified, um, proportionate to the crime they committed, but also that prevents this from happening again. What's well, the response? This has happened twice before. In 1968, they captured USS Pueblo. They still have it. They kept That's the right. crew captive and killed one guy. In 1976, they chopped up two American soldiers with an axe at the MZ, and that, so, that axe is now on display in North Korea. So it's very, very hard to figure out what to do when they have nukes, and they're willing to kill over a million of their own citizens in the 90, 90s rather than let go of their hold on power. What a loathsome group. Michael Marion, thank you for putting that in perspective for us and for cleansing the taste of Larry Wilmore from our mouths.